Houston Chronicle, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is the Houston Chronicle. How do you hear me? Hello, Houston Chronicle. Space Station hears you loud and clear. That's great. Good morning, guys. How are y'all doing? Hey, uh, good morning down there. It's uh, We're doing good up here. It's been a great day. Great. Uh, I wanted to ask you what it was like to conduct those two spacewalks right before Christmas. So were you guys happy to work over the holidays? Well, you know, it was a very busy time after the failure occurred and we started preparing for those spacewalks. We were very, very busy. So we really didn't have much time to celebrate the, the holidays, but we were very happy to do these spacewalks. They were very challenging, very difficult to prepare for, but of course they're also uh, very exciting and, and we enjoy do them, doing them because we train so hard to prepare for them. So we always like to execute what we train for. Uh, so it did take a little bit away from our holidays, but I think it was worth the trade. Were you still, were you still able to celebrate uh, on Christmas Day with, uh, with your colleagues there on station? Uh, yes, yes, we were actually. It worked out fantastic in that regard. Uh, you know, we got everything done on Christmas Eve, and, and on Christmas Day we were able to relax a little bit, have a little bit of time off, and, and we did in fact celebrate uh, here on station and, and had the chance to call family and friends as well. That, that's great. Uh, now, I know that some of the science labs were taken offline when there was a cooling issue. Is everything back and running at, at full capacity in terms of research now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are back at full capacity. Science is going uh, strong. In fact, we've had a lot of science going on today, and a lot came up with the Cygnus vehicle that just uh, docked on, um, on Sunday. So, yeah, science is, is full go right now. That's great to hear. About how many hours do you guys get to spend, say, in a given week working on research? Oh, that's a difficult number to say. You know, the uh, the NASA folks on the ground track it, uh, I think, 35 or 40 hours, something like that. But, uh, you know, there's uh, those. that's a pure research number. I think there's a little bit more time that we spend preparing uh, for the different experiments and tearing them down, so I'm not exactly how it's measured. Speaking of the, uh, the station itself, um, I know obviously it's fully completed, but, you know, you're living up there now. If you, there could be one improvement on the station, what would you like to see? Would it be more space to, to live and work, uh, more people, uh, better food, uh, <laughs> a laundromat? I mean, what, what, would, uh, what would be one thing that would, would improve your quality of life up there? Yeah, those are all good suggestions. Uh, I would say the best way to improve the space station would be to have a uh, have more uh, manned vehicles flying back and forth between the station. That would be, bring about the most improvements. I guess after that it would be uh, probably uh, uh, the food and maybe uh, a shower. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would more manned? Or why would more vehicles help? Just to have some redundancy in the system, or you could get people up and down more frequently, or what? I think all of the above, yeah. You could be uh, bringing more folks up and down. Uh, you'd have more opportunities to take science back down, too. I mean, we, we collect a lot of um, a lot of samples, a lot of specimen. We After we complete a lot of science experiments, they, uh, they get stored until there's an opportunity to bring them down to the ground. So, again, if you had those more uh, frequent manned trips up here, uh, you'd, you'd have a lot of opportunities to bring science back down as well. I see. Um, now, you guys do a lot of these. You talk to the media, you talk to kids, you talk to uh, dignitaries. What's one question that you guys wish people would ask but they never do? I don't know. We've, we've heard quite a few of them. Um, I did have one question that was asked to me, and I've only heard it once, and I really liked it, and it was, uh, tell us one thing about the space station that you wouldn't know about it unless you've actually been there. And I thought that was just an absolutely fantastic question. And what's the answer? I thought you were going to ask me that. So uh, the, the answer I, I felt like was when, when you first get up here and you start to live on station, um, you realize what what an absolutely fantastic machine it is, and and actually it has a sense of of almost as if it's alive. You, there's always something happening. It's it's constantly going 24 hours a day. Even when we're resting, you can still hear the station as it uh, as all the life support systems and everything just keep working. And so you kind of get that sense of the heartbeat of the station, and and that I don't think you can really appreciate unless you've been here. I see. 
Uh, now, Mike, I wanted to ask you, um, how are you, your workouts going in, in space? What are you able to do up there? What are you not able to do, and what do you miss uh, uh, in terms of being able to work out here on Earth? Yeah, actually, the, the workouts up here are, are very, very, very good. I'm, I'm very pleased with what we're able to do up here. Um, if I missed anything, it would be just being able to go for a long run outside and, and have a little bit of uh, the change of scenery as opposed to just running on a treadmill. But uh, we've got the weight machine up here, and we're able to do just about everything that we can do down on Earth in terms of squats and, and deadlifts and bench press. So a lot of that core lifting, a lot of... A lot of those types of activities we're able to do the uh, the exercise bike and the uh, the T2, which is our which is our treadmill. Uh, both of those are absolutely fantastic for the cardio side of things as well. So uh, very pleased with the the workouts, and we do about an hour and a half to two hours a day. So uh, we spend a lot of time on them. You're obviously well in tune with your body. I mean, you know, just just from that standpoint, and not from metrics or measurements. Do you feel like? in terms of your ability to lift weights, you're losing muscle mass, or do you feel like you're, you're able to maintain it? How does it feel when you sort of test yourself? Yeah, actually, I feel, I feel fantastic. I feel like I'm probably in some of the best shape I've ever been because uh, on, the, on the earth, you know, I don't have the opportunity on my schedule uh, guaranteed two hours every day to, to work out. So I've been very pleased with that. And, and so I, I do feel uh, pretty good about where I, I stand on my weightlifting, where I stand uh, with being able to run and ride the bike as well. I, I think, uh, I think I'm, it's, uh, it's a great system up here. Well, it's too bad you guys aren't down here this week. Uh, obviously, we don't have a great view, but the weather the weather here in Houston has been uh, been fantastic. Uh, you're missing out some good months to be out, to be working out outside. Um, uh, here's a question I got from a reader that I thought was interesting. If you had to choose a partner in case of an emergency up there, would you rather have George Clooney or, or Sandra Bullock? Well, I guess it depends on the emergency. Uh, <laughs> But uh, not really knowing either one of their skills, uh, we'd have to lean towards Sandra Bullock. Very good. So, so you guys have been on station for a few months now. As, as you sort of look to your ultimate goal as astronauts or, or career missions, um, you know, is this it, or do you guys look to what NASA is planning five, ten, or fifteen years down the road and hope to be involved in, you know, some deep space travel missions? Okay, well, this is Rick. I'll try to answer first, and then we'll let Mike answer. You know, I've been doing this for, uh, I don't know, 15 years, 16 years or so. Uh, so it's been a while, and uh, this is my fourth mission. I do hope to get involved after this mission's over, get involved with future spacecraft like Orion or some of these commercial vehicles in some way, either to help design them and even maybe to fly them if I'm able to. Uh, so we'll have to just wait and see, but uh, I'm interested in hearing what Mike has to say. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm having the time of my life. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's it's everything I would hope it would be, and so I would love to be able to fly again. I feel very blessed to have this opportunity to fly, uh, but of course, we're going to wait and see. There's a lot of other people that uh, are in line to, to get up here as well and to fly uh, any future vehicles, so um, if I get that opportunity, I'll, I'll certainly uh, seize on it, but uh, if it doesn't happen as well, I'm, I'm very pleased with, with the opportunity I have had. Well, guys, uh, we all watched as you did the great work over the holidays, and, and uh, appreciate you doing it, So, uh, and, and thank you for the time today. Yeah, thank you very much. It was great talking with you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Houston Chronicle portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Sirius XM Radio's Politics of the United States. We have a window of opportunity. We wanted to take advantage of it, and we are going to take you aboard the International Space Station. It's Expedition 38. Flight engineers Michael Hopkins and Rick Mastracchio of NASA are joining us here on POTUS. So, yes, you are talking to people who are up there, if you will. Gentlemen, thank you for uh, being with us today. And let me start with you, Michael Hopkins. Uh, what's it like, first of all, and, and how's, your, how's your mission going? And, and tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for having us, and everything is going really well. We're very excited uh, about uh, the opportunity to be up here, of course, 
And uh, we've had a few exciting events uh, in the mission so far. Of course, we had a couple of EVAs in December. And uh, then we just uh, recently had the arrival of the uh, Orbital One vehicle, the uh, Gordon Fullerton vehicle, which brought a bunch of new science and supplies up. So that was also very exciting. So it's been very busy um, here in the last uh, couple months in particular. And, uh, and our daily routine now is, is we keep maintaining the station and we're doing a lot of science. Uh, thank you. I should have called you a colonel, of course, and I appreciate you joining us. Rick Mastracchio, uh, this is, I guess, the fourth in outer space for you. Is that right? And, and, and does it ever change? Is the excitement still there for you? Yeah, this is my fourth mission up here, but the first three were only two-week missions on board the uh, space shuttle. So this time I'm actually living up here on the space station, so it's quite a bit different. And, uh, but I'm, it's still uh, very exciting for me. Uh, Rick, let me ask you, today we heard some Academy Awards nominated, and I just got to ask you, have either one of you, and I'll ask you first, Rick, have either one of you seen Gravity? Uh, yeah, Mike has not seen it, but uh, just before I launched in November, I think it was sometime in October, we were in Moscow, we went to a Moscow theater and did watch the movie Gravity. Any reviews for us? Well, I, I have to say it was uh, very entertaining. It uh, didn't always uh, obey the laws of physics, but it was an absolutely uh, entertaining movie, and I enjoyed it. I appreciate the, uh, the comment on that. Let's go back to you, uh, Colonel Hopkins. Once again, we are talking live on the International Space Station here on POTUS. And I'm wondering, uh, give us a sense of when you're out, in, and you've had to do some, some wa missions outside of the uh, space station, and just, I don't know if there's a way to put it into words, but for those of us who have never had that experience, how can you relate that to us? Yeah, I, I think uh, one of the easiest ways to relate is the most intense thing I've, I've ever done. Um, you're, you're very excited, but you're also very focused while you're doing it because uh, obviously there's risks while you're out there. You've got these incredible views of the planet that are unobstructed by any windows or anything like that. Uh, so it's just breathtaking, but at the same time, you're constantly having to think about what you're doing, uh, making sure that you've got all your tools attached to you or attached to station, that you're attached to station. And so you constantly uh, have that on your mind as well and so it's it's just a, an extremely intense time uh, but it's also a very rewarding and very exciting time and I know that Rick you're really a scientist can you give us a sense of how different it is uh, to doing things that are you know scientific either experiments or procedures in, in, in outer space in a zero gravity and especially outside of the, the uh, of the craft when it comes to you know the fact that you're working in a, obviously in a vacuum it, just what's the nature of science in space Well, there's a lot of different ways to answer that question. First of all, you know, being up here in a, uh, in a uh, micro-G or a zero-gravity environment, if you will, things are quite a bit different. Some of the things that are very hard on the planet Earth, you know, lifting up an 800-pound uh, mass on the, on, the, on the planet Earth is obviously very difficult up here. We could do that with one hand. But then the simple things up here are very difficult. Like Mike said, just using a tool, and you want to put that tool down somewhere, you can't. You have to attach it with a tether, or you have to uh, Velcro it someplace. So the little things become hard, but the, some of the impossible things become easy up here so it's a, it's kind of interesting how that works rick i know you're the first to come home uh you will be and i'm wondering what's the first thing you want to do when you get back to earth actually mike will be landing about eight weeks before me but the first thing uh, of course i want to do is to see my family second thing of course will be to uh eat just about every food that i uh, haven't had up here <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sorry, I mixed it up. I thought, uh, uh, Colonel Hopkins, you're, you're obviously coming back first. But you'll be back, I guess, in, uh, you're going to be back in time for the Olympics, are you not? No, actually, I'll be up here for the Olympics. And then right after that, uh, early March, the second week of March is when uh, we're returning. So only eight weeks to go, and it's, it's incredible how fast it's gone. Is that uh, so? I'm getting all my facts wrong, so don't mind me if, if at all. If I just, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm being crazy here. But I would like to know, though, uh, when it comes to the Olympics, obviously this is a, a joint project, the United States and, and Russia, and I'm wondering if there's any kind of discussion, anything about rivalries uh, involved. Yeah, actually, you know, it's more than just uh, it's more than just Russia and the U.S. We also have our European partners, our Canadian partners, and our Japanese partners, and it's uh, there's a lot of similarities between what's happening here on the International Space Station and the Olympics. It's a great opportunity, and it really shows the world what can happen when uh, you have such international cooperation. Uh, in terms of rivalry, well, uh, I think certainly if uh, if the hockey teams should uh, meet up, there's there's going to be uh, maybe a little side bet on that. 
Well, as uh, Rick mentioned, too, maybe if you could lift the 800-pound weights from outer space, that would help you out if you guys were able to compete, but I don't think they're going to allow that. So Rick Mastracchio and Michael Hopkins, Colonel Michael Hopkins, Colonel from the U.S. Air Force, I appreciate your spending time with us. Best of luck and Godspeed. Safe return to Earth. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. All right. An opportunity to catch up. Safe return. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.